Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so part six here, and I've called it the crease problem. So here we've got rectangle ABCD, which is folded so that corner A is on top of corner C. And we then form a crease EF and this folding. And the question is, how long is crease EF? Um, okay, um, the only thing we know is that the length of the shorter side of our rectangle is little a here, and the length of um, the longer side of our rectangle is little b here. And so then um, our answer for the length of the crease EF has to be in terms of little a and little b here. But um, otherwise, you know, um, no difference if we're given numbers instead of being told little a and little b, our approach would be the same. Now the solution starts by drawing a diagonal from a to c. Um, notice that as soon as you draw this diagonal, if we call the point of intersection of the diagonal from a to c and the crease EF p, then we've got four 90 degree angles about um, P. In other words, uh, crease EF and diagonal AC have to be perpendicular to each other. Also notice that I have called half of the length of our crease, and so the length of PF here, H. So keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, now we know that we've got a 90 degree angle right here. Uh, something um, very nice happens, which is um, if we, separately draw this triangle APF. First, we know that we've got a 90 degree angle at P. So that is angle APF is a 90 degree angle. And that's because, as I said, crease EF and diagonal AC have to be perpendicular. And then I've called the angle, um, the angle FAP. So FAP, I've called it alpha. And then, of course, I've called this angle right here beta. Now, the other right triangle that I'm going to take out of this rectangle is uh, right triangle ABC. So let's look at that. Notice first that at corner B here, which I've forgotten to name it looks like, we've got a 90 degree angle. In addition, this angle right here is alpha, which is the same as this angle right here. Because in this rectangle, right, like this right triangle um, APF, and then uh, right triangle ABC have a shared angle over here, this little guy right here, yeah? And that angle is alpha right there. And they both also have a 90 degree angle, and therefore by the angle-angle theorem, these two triangles must be similar. And if they're similar, uh, then the ratio of their corresponding sides have to be equal. Now first, let's figure out the length of AC. We know that the length of AC by the Pythagorean theorem has to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. And therefore, half of the length of AC, that is uh, the measure of side uh, AP, has to be, well, one half of the square root of a squared plus b squared. So AP here is one half the square root of a squared plus b squared. So we know this length right here. And we also know uh, AB here, uh, and it's of length b, right? Little b here, right? Okay. Uh, furthermore, we know that um, CB here, right, or BC right here, is of length little a. And so then we've got all the things that we need to set the um, ratios of um, corresponding sides equal and solve for H in terms of little a, little, um, little b, right? Okay, so uh, the ratio we're going to set is that um, little a over here is to H as... Um, little b here is to uh, ap, right? Okay, and that's this ratio here. Cross multiplying, we get this equation, ah, which is a little off page. Um, sorry guys, hold on. I know how to fix this. It's a little off page, but we can fix that. Okay, so there. And I got to this equation again just by cross multiplying from this equation. And then next, all I have to do is divide this last equation by um, B on both sides, and then I'll be able to solve for H, and there's our final answer, yeah? Alright, cool. I hope you enjoyed this, and keep watching. Take care.